Hello, it's Graciela on this side of the screen. Welcome to Power GI. In some of our previous videos, we were learning how to set up the Graph API and how to use it in Power Automate. However, Microsoft also offers a SharePoint API that can be used for a lot of things. In today's video, we'll be learning how to set up this SharePoint API in Azure using app registrations and how to use this API from Power Automate using the HTTP action card. It's important to mention that Power Automate has an out-of-the-box action to send HTTP requests to SharePoint without any need of doing setups on Azure or any other place. So depending on your needs, you may want to take a look at it first. Okay, let's get started. Everything that will be shown in this video will be based on this documentation page provided by Microsoft. However, we are going to change the order a little bit. We're going to get started by browsing to the Azure portal. Once there, we need to open Azure Active Directory. I have it here in, in my home, so I can just click it. In case you don't see it, just type Active Directory in the search bar and you will see it. We need to go to App Registrations and we're gonna click on New Registration. We need to assign a name to it and we need to decide which type of accounts will have access to the application that we are registering. In this case, I'm going to select just accounts under my tenant and the redirect URL, you can leave it blank and then just click on register. If we go back to Microsoft documentation page, we see here that we need to create a self-signed certificate. This is because authentication for this API works a little different compared to the Graph API. In the Graph API, you would normally go to Certificates and Secret and click on New Client Secret and that will automatically give you a secret value that you can use to authenticate your, your access. If you try to do this using the SharePoint API, you're going to get an error that the app only token are not supported. So we need to do the certificate part. It's actually pretty simple to get this done and Microsoft documentation already gives you the script that you can use. So as you can see, this is a PowerShell script. I'm just gonna search PowerShell here. And really important, you need to run this as an administrator. Okay, so let's just copy the script provided by Microsoft and we're gonna paste it in PowerShell. Once we hit enter, it's going to ask you a couple of things. In this case, as you can see, the common name needs to be your company name. In this case, I'm going to uh, write Power GI. Then we need to indicate which is the start date. And here we can see uh, the format in which we need to write it in the console. And then we need to indicate an end date, which is in the very same format as, as the start date. Then it will ask us to write a password. Make sure that you remember this password because this will be used for future steps. In my case, the password that I've used is dev2021. So it has generated some files for us and here we can see the names that it generated. So let's just open the file explorer and let's go to this directory and search for our files. Here they are. Once we have our certificate ready, we can go back to Azure. The next step is indicating which are the permissions that we are going to assign to this application. In this case, we want this application to have access to, to have full control in SharePoint. So we're going to go to API permissions and I'm going to click add permission and several options will show up. So let's just click on SharePoint and then we're gonna click on application permissions and select sites full control. And then I'm gonna click add permissions. Once it is updated, you're gonna see this is not granted for my tenant. So just to grant the access, just click on grant admin consent for your tenant. Then just click yes. So if we go back to the documentation, we're gonna see that the next thing that we have to do is actually uploading the certificate that we just generated. So let's go back to Azure portal and we need to go to certificates and secrets. And here we're going to click on upload certificate. So just, let's just click on browse and we're going to select the certificate. It has been uploaded. And then to make sure that uh, this was uploaded correctly, 
we need to go to the manifest option here. Once we are here, we need to make sure that that these kick credentials are, are here and then that they look in the same format that the Microsoft documentation is stating. So if you see something similar like this, it means that the certificate has been added successfully to our application. Now we are pretty much ready to get started to, to use it in actual HTTP calls. But before we actually do that, we need a, a little more information regarding our app to be able to use it. In this case, we need to go to overview and then here we have some IDs, which are the application and the ID and the tenant ID. So we're going to make sure to copy those. Okay, so let's switch to Power Automate and click on New Flow and then uh, Instant Cloud Flow. We're going to uh, trigger it on demand. So let's just uh, assign a name. Okay, we're going to uh, create it. We are going to search for the HTTP action here. For the first um, example, we're just going to do a GET request and the URL, the endpoint that we're going to use is actually is this one. As you can see, it's quite different from the Graph API because the Graph API uses a, a standard endpoint regardless of the tenant. In this case, the endpoint for the SharePoint API actually contains the domain name. So I'm going to change the domain to the, the actual SharePoint name of my tenant. If I go back to any SharePoint site that I have here, um, I will just copy this and then paste it. And uh, then we need to know which site we want to make the call for. So I'm just going to also get here the, the site name and paste it here. We have underscore API web and then after the web we indicate whatever thing we want to get from SharePoint. Now it's really important that you always make sure that you put the right headers. All that information is available in the Microsoft documentation. You need to make sure you indicate this part if you want to get a JSON response. Otherwise you're going to get something different as you can see in the notes they are including. So make sure to include the headers so everything will be as you as you will need. Since Power Automate has this authentication method Active Directory or Auth, that's the one that we're gonna use. So we don't really we won't really do this part of the access token. If you are making the call in another application or, or program then you need to add this part. I'm going just to start filling out what I need here. In this case, my tenant is what we just got from Azure. Then the client ID is my application ID. And the audience, I'm just going to get the very same SharePoint link that we have above and paste it here. And then uh, here, it's really important in the credential type, you cannot use secret for the SharePoint API the credential type will be certificate and, and then it's going to prompt us to write the PFX value and the password. The password is the same one that we just indicated in PowerShell when we were setting up the certificate. So I'm just going to copy and paste it back to Power Automate. Then to get the PFX, you can use some PowerShell scripts to get that information. And we're going to leave this code in the description of the video so you can use it. Uh, here you will just need to replace the name of your PFX file. I named my certificate power GI. I'm just going to copy this and go to PowerShell and then paste it and then execute. It's going to give me back a really long string and that's what I need to use in Power Automate to be able to authenticate correctly. So it's a pretty long string but that's what we need to use. Of course this is not the most secure way of putting this authentication information out there so you may consider to use a uh, the Azure key vault where I'm just gonna save this we'll be able to see it working now okay and now it seems that the flow ran successfully and you know once we have all this setup done you can do a lot much more than just getting the list of a SharePoint site and you can take a look at the Microsoft documentation that is out there there are pretty cool features of this API. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you soon. Bye bye.